there's a, an awful lot of facial expression happening, and, and it is clearly impacting a 14-year-old girl. I have been watching both the defendant and the child's mother okay. and, um, and others. Everybody, you're all being watched. Nothing that would uh, be, in my opinion, an effort to influence the child in any way or make this more difficult will be tolerated and it will be addressed rapidly. Some uh, subtle communications from the witness to Mr. Anderson. Maybe there could be some instruction about that too. She is uh, looking over and she, getting smiles from the defendant. My client has not prompted any of that behavior. She has been looking over here and has been looking at him and smiling and that's been unprompted. I can't see her face and uh, even if I turned down the TV, I wouldn't be able to see her face. I have noticed that she has looked both in the direction of her mother and her father, which I think is quite normal. I would uh, encourage uh, both uh, the, well, anybody, but particularly the parents to resist any effort of uh, recognition. It's a legitimate concern, Mr. Gravely, and uh, it will continue to be scrutinized. A legitimate concern, and the judge says, I'm watching all of you, even her mother there inside of the courtroom. Jack, what do you make of that? Well, I appreciate this is a real-world judge. He has real-world world experience. We all recognize him from the Rittenhouse trial anyway, right? But what we have is also somebody who recognizes the family dynamics that exist, and there is really no way to create walls so big that they're not going to peek around or peek over. It's just a fact. The question is, does it rise to the level where all of a sudden you're going to say, you're impacting the witness testimony itself. And that's really the line that that judge is watching for, rightfully so. But I still think you're going to see those reactions where somebody peeks or looks or smiles at, one, at a defendant or at somebody who's in the gallery or something else. It happens every single day. You see it when you're in there. And outside of what's happening as far as those expressions, it's interesting for us to watch, but guess what? It's not going on the record. Yeah. So in the case of any kind of appeal, that's not actually going to come out in the transcript. But Josh, what is she said that you think is most important to this actual case? To the actual case, I think that she's humanized the family because clearly they all got along. The fact that dad was a weed grower doesn't impact them. That was just part of their life. The uncles, the grandfather, and the family, the way she was talking and I felt, and I want to know if people agree with me, it appeared pretty loving and cooperative. They were doing stuff together. She clearly knew her dad really well and Doesn't that's sound like she important. was scared of him in any way. She's not showing any signs of animosity nope. with her dad. You know what it really was though, is she was really authentic. Mm -hmm. You realize here is the example where there is no black and white. It's not so simple. This is the evil one, this is the great one. It really wasn't that. This is somebody who I loved, love. And yet this may be the very same person who I know what I know. And I really appreciate that there is that gray in the world. And frequently, as a defense attorneys, this is, this is our area of operation. It's the gray in the room. The jury's trying to figure out what that gray is. This young lady, this 14-year-old, is willing to sit right there. And when she tells you something, I'm listening. I'm thinking, if she tells me something, I'm believing it. All right. Let's talk about the marijuana uh, part of it for a moment because we, we're getting those questions, which are legitimate questions Absolutely. from our viewers, about why so much time was spent mm. during her, her testimony about it. And we were able to look back to figure out when the judge did allow this in, and it had to do with a jailhouse informant on the stand. I think we have some video of when he testified. Uh, Marcan Washington, he's someone who was incarcerated with the defendant, and he said the reason that we were talking and bonded is because we were bonding over the weed business, that this defendant was in the weed business, and the state was able to show that this other marijuana testimony would bolster his credibility. The judge said it can't be used for character, but it can be used for helping the credibility of this man. Absolutely, if you can't get it in through door one, you go to door two, and if you can't eat there, there's door three. 
there's met so many different ways to use evidence. There are a lot of tools and pathways good creative lawyers such as the state are going to use to bring this state stuff in. The state, of course, is hoping that associating this family with a marijuana grow operation that may have been illegal at the law, under the law at that time is going to harm and throw some shade on the defendant. But we've discussed it. Marijuana has changed so much over the last 5, 10, 15 years, especially in our western states. We don't believe that's going to be some sort of a stain on on the character uh, of see, death. And my problem with is, you know what, the reason the prosecutor really wants this, wants a scumbag, always a scumbag. Come on, that's the reason you do and, and then what you get is the judge saying, by the way, you can't talk about character, you can't think about character, don't think about character, make sure you're not thinking character. What are you thinking about? Character. Yeah. I'm and, shocked. And, oh yeah, okay. And that's the problem is <laughs> it's disingenuous and the question is whether the defense is going to be able to show the state's being disingenuous, throwing the shade on the defendant. Y'all know that that's not what this case is about. This is the state trying to bully, use all their tools, and some of them are off-putting. People, jurors don't like seeing the state take undue advantage. We will see. The cross-examination is still going on. We're going to squeeze in a break. Court hasn't started back yet, but a quick note as we head to break. We're also live in Tampa, Florida for the Ice Cream Man murder retrial. It's in its second week. Testimony is about to resume there as well after lunch. Michael Keatley is accused of gunning down two innocent brothers in the hunt for suspects who robbed his ice cream truck months earlier that trial is streaming on courttv.com you can watch it live there don't go anywhere this is court tv your front row seat to justice tonight on closing arguments the latest on the idaho student murders with the alleged killer now awaiting trial how has the community come to grips with what happened a quadruple homicide in moscow idaho it's just unheard of Plus reaction from today's hearing in the civil trial between the parents of Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry. What we learned today that will impact their trial moving forward. Closing arguments with Vinny Politan tonight at 8, 7 central, only on court. Welcome back to CORE TV Live. We are following Wisconsin versus Zachariah Anderson that's happening now. Our CORE TV cameras are there. And day 11 for this trial has brought the defendant's daughter to the stand. We're going to go in now. We're outside the presence of the jury. They are back from lunch, and the attorneys are talking to the judge about more of those expressions, including the one we just showed you during her testimony. It, it appears the communication to you was at 11.31 a.m. I think. Well, just so it's clear. It did not come directly to me. The clerk got it. Did you get it as a forward, or was that sent directly? We you? did. No, sorry. Wait, okay. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, mine is headed your name. That's the only reason I provide. I indicated it was provided by you. Um, but um, it uh, the the message, as the court is aware, is that court TV showed a clip where the defendant used his two fingers and placed them over his lips as his daughter was testifying to suggest uh, to not say anything. Um, we are aware now Court TV has played this clip multiple times. Uh, uh, they have even slowed it down to be sure that uh, their viewing audience uh, was able to uh, clearly see the uh, uh, to what happened, the gesture. Um, so we have a copy of what they have played but there are commentators who are speaking over it, so we cannot tell what the specific question is that it's in relation to, which I feel would be important to the court to know context. Uh, it certainly would be important to the state. Um, we have asked Court TV, who have indicated that if the court orders uh, Court TV to provide an original copy that does not have the commentator's voiceover, um, that uh, they would provide that pursuant to the court ordering that in this courtroom today. And I, then all the parties would be able to see that clip and know specifically when the defendant makes the gesture, which clearly has occurred because we've seen video of it, um, what the context is. We know his daughter was testifying. We don't know what the question was uh, or where she was in her answer. Um, I am asking the court to um, briefly take a look at what we have. Uh, I'm asking the court for an order uh, to court TV so that we may finish our investigation of this. Uh, and if we have any additional information we think is relevant, we'll bring it to the court. Uh, the court will remember I expressed a concern earlier that, uh, that uh, I, I wanted the court to be as diligent as it felt appropriate um, to uh, try to make sure that uh, this 
uh, minor child was not in a position where um, she was being uh, influenced, and so I asked the court to uh, to also uh, at this point impose an order um, that uh, recognizes uh, what has already uh, been detected uh, in the court TV um, film. Well, you're dating yourself because it's not film. Did I say, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. But anyway, um, is there a response? I have watched, thank you. I have watched the clip. Um, obviously, what we don't see in the clip is the other side because they're not filming. Question while asking, um, Mr. Anderson's daughter would look over at him and would mouth something under, like, just mouth something. I can't say what it is. I can't say when that happened. I did not personally observe Mr. Anderson make these gestures. I've watched it now on here, but so I can't say if it was in response to that or not. But I will say that that was occurring, and it could be that that was a response to her mouthing on, while the state was asking a question. So um, that would be the only thing I have to add to to that. I, I obviously can't speak any further. So the, the minor is in the courtroom. I don't know if the court uh, feels it's appropriate to have her here as we discuss this, but I, I should I have just, brought that up I earlier. I just have noticed that. Yeah. Um, uh, we do have the clip, and we would like at least to show the court what has been broadcast by Court TV now multiple times, so at least the court has that um, available for its for it, in, in its knowledge. Well, um, how difficult is it for Court TV? Okay. And um, I would say I've been given, I've been requested to order it. And to me, orders are last resorts. Uh, can I request it? <laughs> we we tried to go through those options, Judge, uh, prior to uh, coming up right. with you, and uh, we felt like we we heard them clearly. Okay, well, it is something that may be of benefit uh, to the uh, trial. So, uh, yes, under the circumstances, I will order that you produce that. Uh, is that something that takes a certain amount of time or a foreseeable amount of time? Okay, great. If you would then, thank you. And then judge, there was another issue that the defense was made aware of that attorney Birdsall will speak on. Yeah, judge, um, so apparently, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this has been brought to our attention too. Obviously we can't see everything that's going on, but that Ms. Beecham is apparently a certified in ASL, American Sign Language, and Olivia knows the language. And the observers that reported to us said that she was signing to her. I don't know what about. One thing that was, cal was mentioned was calm down. What else was signed to her? I don't know. Um, you know, and I don't, I, I, I have no idea if Court TV would have picked any of that. Footage, we could look at that too. I, I'm sorry, I did not hear. Have they only have that clip. Oh, what's up there? Uh, so I, I want to report to the court what I know about this, just in terms of uh, reaction. So Sadie Beecham indicates she is not a certified American Sign Language uh, interpreter or uh, a person of that sort. And most importantly, um, uh, the minor child indicates she does not know that language. So she is not somebody who has that in her uh, ability to understand. I'll permit you to examine either or both if you want. Um, outside. You're
presence of the jury? Indeed. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, Ms. Beecham also denies that she that she did any of that. So. All right. Uh, let, let's start one thing at a time. Uh, can you run this? Yes. Is that a rerun? Or yeah, it's a rerun. So, so because yeah. there, they, there's they, only one incident. The, yeah, the, well, that's the one that they were playing on court TV that we were made aware of. I don't know if there are others, but that's the one. And then I would play it with sound, but it's um, pundits talking about what's happening. It's not the. Have life. they mentioned my tie? Uh, they know they were more focused on the, what. The market tie? No, no, all right. They, they were focused oh, on the efforts of the. I, I understand. Um, all right. Well. Let's uh, let that sit uh, for the time being. Um, you are, if you wish, you may examine uh, either Ms. Beecham or um, the child. And uh, no. to you. Yes, outside the jurors' presence. Um, am I going to have an opportunity to to, um, it, to question the defendant? Yeah, under oath. Yeah. Uh, well, the the defendants kind of we can actually see. Okay. Um, I'm not in a position, so it it may make a difference. I don't know. Um, it is it's not uh, uh, it's it's not on the merits of the case, so I wouldn't. Well, I'll, I'll tackle that if I need to. Might as well make a record of a judge. So I, I don't have so far the source of this allegation. Councils have represented to us that they have received this allegation. I have not seen this allegation, so I, uh, I, I don't know. I am when you say this allegation, you're talking about Ms. Beecham. I, I'm right. I'm talking about the one uh, that has been uh, forwarded by by the defense table, and I assume they are not. I, I, I understand them to not be direct witnesses. They are simply recounting something that has been reported to them. Who are the informants? They, so yeah. as members of his family. Okay. So, so, so that yeah. they observed it themselves here yes. in the courtroom? Yes. Okay. And and have evidently reported that um, Ms. Beecham is a certified interpreter of sign language, which is which we have told the court is not true. And also have evidently reported that um, that the minor in this case knows sign language and she okay. says she does not. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, let me, um, so this does not come from the, the allegation we've described to you is not only on television, but it is apparently someone who has no connection to the case that we're aware of. The allegation the court has just heard has been family members who have been here all trial. I haven't pressed court TV. Right. Um. Uh, we were uh, what I was what I understood I was being told was that they don't have a video of the conduct which is being described on behalf of Ms. Beecham, but I didn't ask whether they have looked. <coughs> so I don't know if it's if if we're dealing with something that's is which is unavailable. Or something which has not been searched for or found. I, I suspect. Uh, what can you tell me? Okay. Is that a satisfactory explanation? Well, I, you know, I've watched the live feed either. At council table, or if I'm out of the courtroom, I'll, and I have seen them. Uh, Ms. Beecham has been on camera many, many times. So uh, I, I'm just the interesting thing, Judge, is 
or the complicated thing is that, you know, even if they were to do a search, <clears throat> you would have to have some specialized knowledge what to look for in terms of sign language, because I wouldn't know. Well, but even, even the question of whether she um, had her hands anywhere in a position which could effectively communicate with a witness stand, yeah. that would be something that would be searchable. But I interrupted you. Well, I, I just don't know in terms of the coverage whether or not um, the lack of pointing the camera in that direction was just for this witness because I, I know for a fact that I've seen you know, Ms. Beecham and the whole family there um, many, many times, you know, those cutaways while the testimony is going on. So, you know, and, and it might be uh, a bit of a slog to, to, to look through some of that footage, but, um, you know, uh, I'll, I can only report what was reported to me in terms of what was seen. What was seen with the eye here in the courtroom? Correct. Not what was seen on court TV. Correct. I, I assume that whoever's reporting this from the family is an American Sign Language competent person. I, I yeah, otherwise, I, why would I, someone I, make such a report? Because so they I all know that. each other. What? Because they all know each other. Sure, but I mean, th this is a this is a serious allegation for no, somebody. No, no, no. I'm not trying to minimize the allegation yeah. at all. I'm trying to. Uh, to me, the awareness of whether American Sign Language was used could have come from the fact that these people all know each other and think that she is an interpreter or, or conversant with that language. Right, but it, it, as, least as, <laughs> as least as the attorneys reported it to me, and, 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 maybe, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I was told that the allegation, and I, it wasn't shared with me, it was a family member until now, but, but that if that it was the allegation was that there specifically this person reported that they had seen Sadie the mother who is a certified American Sign Language interpreter interpreting or, or flashing signs to uh, the minor on the stand who also knows sign language this is what was reported to me what and, and one example was calm down, but it, but it, it was said in the plural when it was said to me. Um, so for someone to say, to, for someone to take the leap and say, this was American Sign Language that was done over there, I assume it's a person with some competency in that bef before they would make such an allegation. But I, I don't know that. I'm just no. suggesting that, that that is my... I is it a person who has competency in this language so they know what a sign what these signs are now if uh, <coughs> I wouldn't join in your assumption and I'm not saying it's wrong I'm saying to me if if they know Ms. Beecham and have spent time with her over the years and uh, and uh, are familiar with uh, whether she, she speaks French or German or American Sign Language, <coughs> then that might affect what they would report to you, but I don't know. But we're getting way, way off track here. Um, here here's, here's my concern, Judge, and I apologize for interrupting. We have reported to you something that is, has been nationally broadcast. The court's now seen, seen the film. You, you've also heard reported a family member of the defendant what in, in what at least now seems to be highly speculative information and I, and, and our, our latest discussion from from the parties is that we will be placing people under oath based on that highly speculative and potentially biased information um, and the defendant I and mean, I don't know what the court's plan on doing next but the defendant then, we're, we're left with no additional action taken at this time. So I, I feel like if one thinks about the scales in any fashion in this case, uh, in those regards, that, that that seems like an outcome that is, uh, uh, that the court should consider. And I never said I wouldn't consider it. I um, 
offered the opportunity for the defense to examine the witness and, uh, well, the two witnesses about it. Um, and I have not ruled out ordering Court TV to uh, conduct the search that you're seeking. I think the court already ordered it. Am I missing? No, Am I wrong? No, this, yeah, you ordered the you search ordered we're it. seeking. I ordered the search with respect right. to the coordination of the testimony of, yeah, I, I, I haven't ordered Court TV anything with respect to the accusation about Ms. Uh, Mitchell. Right. So I, if I misspoke, yeah. Okay. That, yeah, I, I uh, that was what, what, when you were talking about having seen other instances where uh, Beecham was pictured, I, I agree with you because I saw um, one or two myself, um, but I wondered whether they do things differently on different days, and I'm sure they do. Um, and she's nodding yes, they do. So I'm going to accept her representation um, and not uh, have them search further because we've already given them one assignment. And as you heard me a moment ago, uh, I was reticent about uh, giving them an order anyway, but that was what they needed, so I gave it. But I will still permit you to examine the people involved about that, and you can examine these people who have made the accusation as to whether you can examine the defendant about anything. That's a separate question I'll have to right, take yeah. up if it arises. Uh, as long as I'm also allowed to examine family members who have made such an allegation in this situation and find out their basis of knowledge, then I understand. All right. So do you want to examine? Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Let me call the jury and tell them we're not just late at lunch. Yep. You can take it down. The judge taking a bit of a break, and now we can talk about everything that has unfolded. Still here with me to talk about all this, criminal defense attorneys, Josh Schiffer, Jack Rice. Pundit A, uh, yeah, Pundit B. You heard the judge talking about commentators. I got to tell you, a little nervous whenever the judge is mentioning our name over and over inside of the courtroom. You don't want to become part of the story, but now it seems that what has been filmed is part of the story. And now the question of what's going on in this courtroom between parents and their daughter. So the, the, the giant mystery for me is I, no one can tell me what the real dynamic between the parties are because we're filtering it through a court proceeding. We don't know if the daughter is with mom, with dad, with both. We don't know if she, if mom and dad, what their relationship is. There are all these hidden dynamics that the judge doesn't know about either. Judge is trying to protect his process. Judge needs to be sure to be responsive to any complaints or concerns from both the state and the defense. I have to address the video that we're showing because obviously now it has become part of what the court is talking about. And in terms of when it happened, it was around 11.33 this morning during the direct examination. We don't know if there were questions going on, if it was a time that the state was paused in their questioning, but it was around the time when the daughter was testifying about the victim when she was asked what kind of names the defendant had nicknames that were derogatory and she even said a moment that I thought was pretty mature that I don't want to say this in front of his mother so I don't know we're gonna go back and look for it ourselves obviously now we've been ordered by the court to pull the actual sound and the context so we understand exactly when it happened and what was going on in the background but what could this mean? I mean, they're calling witnesses to the stand now to talk about these yeah, things. You're, look, you're talking about witness tampering now. Mm -hmm. You really are. I mean, you're, you're simply saying there is a witness in the witness box. Is there somebody outside of the witness box that's telling them to say certain things or not say certain things, whether or not that's the defendant, whether or not it's the mother, whether or not it's somebody else, whether or not it's through body language, whether or not it's through sign language, whatever ASL, what, what, what German, French, whatever the judge was saying, all of those have a very real impact. And when you're gonna start calling witnesses now, 
about this issue, which is a sub-issue issue of what this issue. is about. Case it, in the case. it is really an extraordinary thing. And if I might, as an aside, it is very interesting to, to sit here and comment on a case as it's happening and then listen to a judge talk about us commenting about the thing that we're talking about as he's commenting. Understand, we're watching him, watching us, watching him. That is an extraordinarily surreal moment as we sit right here. And, and, and one of the things that's going to happen here, I'm imagining in a couple minutes, mom probably needs to be assigned an attorney right now because she's going to be asked to testify about Did she what say, happened, what down. didn't happen. This is in a criminal context. If she is believed to be lying or misleading the court, the prosecutor is basically under an obligation to prosecute the lead witness in a major case for manipulating a witness on the stand during time. You can't just, you know, unexpected. no harm, no foul. All this that. So unexpected in this they'll, testimony. They'll assign a public defender, they right? Now. They're going to bring somebody in and they're going to talk to them. I, I've seen this happen before, in, at least in the sense of bringing in a public defender to say, you need to step in right now and represent this person on this issue. Let them understand what the Fifth Amendment is. Let them talk about what it is that you can say or not. And they may actually shut this down and say, I'm not talking. We'll see what happens. We have to fit in a break, guys. I know we could <laughs> talk trial. about this for a long Mistrial. time. But let's get to that break so that we can get back inside of that courtroom where things are still unfolding. The daughter still on the stand. Don't go anywhere.